Suppose that f is a function of time t, okay? For example, f of t could be the position of a car along a road at time t, yes. Or if you would like another example, f of t could be the temperature of an object at time t. I would imagine that in many practical situations we might know the value of such a function f at some starting time t equals a, and we would want to figure out the value of f at some later time t equals b, indeed. And what is the change in the value of a function when its input changes from a to b? The change in the value of a function when its input changes from a to b is f of b minus f of a, yes, and what if we don't know f of b, is there any hope? If we don't know f of b, but we have additional information to work with, perhaps there is hope, yes. If we don't know f of b, but we know the instantaneous rate of change of f at each moment during the time interval from a to b, then we can still figure out the change in f as its input changes from a to b. How can we do that? By chopping up the time interval from a to b into a bunch of extremely short time intervals and computing the change in f during each of these short time intervals. The total change in f is the sum of all these little changes. You make it sound so easy. But how do we know the change in f during each of these short time intervals? Simply take the instantaneous rate of change of f at any instant, chosen arbitrarily, in an extremely short time interval, and multiply by the duration of that time interval. The number that you get is approximately the change in f during this extremely short time interval. Because I understand the idea of instantaneous rate of change, I can see that what you have said is correct. By adding up all these little changes, we compute the total change in f as its input changes from a to b. But each of those little changes was only computed approximately, and so by adding all of them up you merely get an approximation to the total change in f as its input changes from a to b. That is correct. If we desire a more accurate approximation to f of b minus f of a then we can repeat this process, but this time chopping up the interval from a to b into even shorter intervals of time, I see. And if I wanted even more accuracy still, I could repeat the process again, this time using even shorter intervals of time, yes. The total change f of b minus f of a is the limit of the successive approximations we might obtain in this manner, by chopping up the interval from a to b into shorter and shorter subintervals of time. You now understand the fundamental theorem of calculus, but what does this have to do with calculus? The instantaneous rate of change of a function is called the derivative of that function in calculus. That name makes it sound more difficult than it really is, yes. And the process of computing f of b minus f of a in the manner that we described is called integrating the instantaneous rate of change of f from a to b. The word integrate also makes it sound more difficult than it really is. Yes. So you are saying that by integrating the derivative of f we obtain f of b minus f of a. Yes. In other words the total change is the sum of all the little changes. I see. Thank you for explaining calculus to me. You're welcome. I enjoyed explaining calculus to you.